Welcome to Maths Companion. In the last video, we have discussed the section changing times and there was a homework. Let us do it now. A person took out a loan of 16,000 rupees from a bank which charges interest compounded quarterly. The annual rate of interest is 10%. How much should he pay back after 9 months to settle the loan? The person took out a loan of 16,000 rupees. That means P is 16,000. Annual rate of interest is 10%. And here interest is compounded quarterly. Therefore R is equal to 10 by 4 or 2.5. We have to find how much should he pay after 9 months. 9 months means 3 quarter years. Therefore N equal to 3. Amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Replacing the values, we get 16,000 into 1 plus 2.5 by 100 all raised to 3. 1 plus 2.5 by 100 equal to 102.5 by 100. So this can be written as 16,000 into 102.5 by 100 all raised to 3. 102.5 by 100 all raised to 3 is 102.5 by 100 into 102.5 by 100 into 102.5 by 100. So this can be written as 16,000 into 102.5 by 100 into 102.5 by 100 into 102.5 by 100. Let us cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. Again we can cancel one more zero from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 16 into 102.5 into 102.5 into 102.5 divided by 10 into 100. Let us multiply 102.5 by 102.5 at first. Then we get 10506.25. Again we have to multiply this by 102.5. Then we get 10,76,890.625. Now we have to multiply this by 16. Then we get 1 crore 72,30,250. Now we have to divide this by 10 into 100 or 1000. Then we get 17,230.250. This means 17,230 rupees and 25 paise. Rounding we get 17,230 rupees. That is to settle the loan after 9 months he has to pay 17,230 rupees. Now let us do the remaining problems on page 94. Manu deposited 15,000 rupees in a financial establishment which pays interest compounded every 3 months at 8% annual rate. How much would he get back after 1 year? Manu deposited 15,000 rupees that means P is 15,000. Annual rate of interest is 8%. Here interest compounded every 3 months. That is, it is quarterly compounding. Therefore, R is equal to 8 by 4 or 2. We have to find the amount after 1 year. That means, after 4 quarter years. Therefore, N equal to 4. Amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Replacing the values, we get 15,000 into 1 plus 2 by 100 all raised to 4. 1 plus 2 by 100 is 102 by 100. So, this can be written as 15,000 into 102 by 100 all raised to 4. 102 by 100 all raised to 4 is 102 by 100 into 102 by 100 into 102 by 100 into 102 by 100. So this can be written as 15,000 into 102 by 100 into 102 by 100 into 102 by 100 into 102 by 100. Let us cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. We can cancel one more zero from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 15 into 102 into 102 into 102 into 102. Let us multiply 102 by 102. Then we get 10,404. Therefore, this product is also 10,404. So, instead of multiplying 102 four times, we can multiply 10,404 by 10,404 again. Then we get 10 crores 82 lakhs 43,216. Now we have to multiply this again by 15. Then we get 
162 crores 36 lakhs 48,240. Now we have to divide this by 10 into 100 into 100 or 1 lakh. Dividing we get 16,236.48240. This means 16,236 rupees and almost 48 paise. So rounding we get 16,236 rupees. That means after one year he will get 16,236 rupees. Another problem. John deposited 2,500 rupees on the 1st of January in a bank where interest is compounded half yearly at 6% annual rate. On the 1st of July, he deposits 2,500 rupees more. How much would he have in his account at the end of the year? He deposited 2,500 rupees on the 1st of January. Again, he deposited 2,500 rupees on the 1st of July. So here, we can do it directly without using the equation. Amount deposited on the 1st of January is 2,500 rupees. Annual rate of interest is 6% and it is half yearly compounding here. And here, interest is compounded half yearly. Therefore, R is 3. That means interest is 2,500 into 3 by 100. We can cancel the two zeros. We get 25 into 3 or 75 rupees. That is, for the first half year, the interest is 75 rupees. Therefore, at the end of the first half year, the amount is 2500 plus 75 or 2575 rupees. On the 1st of July, he again deposited 2500 rupees. So, the total amount in his account is 2575 plus 2500 and that is equal to 5075 rupees. After 6 months, he will again get interest at 3%. So the interest is equal to 5075 into 3 by 100. We can multiply 5075 by 3 and then we can divide it by 100. We get 152.25. That means 152 rupees and 25 paise. Rounding the interest is 152 rupees. After one year, he will get this interest and the amount at the beginning of the second half year that is 5075 and 152 so the total amount at the end of the year is 5227 rupees next problem ramlet deposits 30000 rupees in a financial establishment which pay interest at 9% annual rate compounded every 4 months how much would she get back after one year? She deposits 30,000 rupees. That means P equal to 30,000. Annual rate of interest is 9%. How many four months are there in any year? There are three four months in any year. Therefore, R is equal to 9 by 3 or 3. Since there are three four months in any year, N equal to 3. Now, amount is P into 1 plus R by 100 all raised to N. Replacing the values, we get 30,000 into 1 plus 3 by 100 all raised to 3. 1 plus 3 by 100 is 103 by 100. So this can be written as 30,000 into 103 by 100 all raised to 3. 103 by 100 all raised to 3 is 103 by 100 into 103 by 100 into 103 by 100. So this can be written as 30,000 into 103 by 100 into 103 by 100 into 103 by 100. We can cancel two zeros from both numerator and denominator. Again, we can cancel two more zeros from both numerator and denominator. What remains now? 3 into 103 into 103 into 103 divided by 100. Let us multiply 103 by 103. We get 10,609. Again, multiply it by 103. Then we get 10,92,727. Now we have to multiply it by 3. Then we get 32,78,181. Now we have to divide it by 100. Then we get 32,781.81. That is 32,781 rupees and 81 paise. 
rounding we get 32,782 rupees. That means after one year she will get 32,782 rupees. We shall discuss the remaining part in the next video. Till then, bye.